Really quick, if you haven't seen my most recent episode on Tomb of Horrors Adventurer, make sure you check that episode out because this card, well, can triple anything. And yeah, that's pretty absurd. But don't leave just yet because you have got to stay tuned for this episode where we talk about a brand new card that is going to help us punish our opponents in some pretty brutal ways. So with all that said, let's jump into it. So, Baylor, and my apologies if I'm mispronouncing, that is a 5-5 demon with flying that costs 3 red red. It has, when it attacks or dies, choose one or more, each mode must target a different player. Target opponent draws 3 cards, then discards 3 cards at random. Target opponent sacrifices a non-token artifact. Baylor deals damage to target opponent equal to the number of cards in their hand. So each of those are pretty brutal effects that you get on a 5-5 flying demon. So yeah, that, that's not too bad for 5 mana. And of course, you get those effects on attack or when Baylor dies. Now, of course, keep in mind that each of those modes has to target a different player, which is fine. Because in a multiplayer format like Commander, of course, with a card like this, we just love spreading the punishment around. That first mode might be the most brutal out of all of these, forcing a player to draw three cards and discard three at random. Well, this can really just mess with someone's plans. They might have their next turn set up perfectly, and then all of a sudden you're like, um, no, you get to draw three and just lose three cards at random, and those might be the best cards in their hand. And of course, you know, in a deck that might utilize ways to punish opponents for either drawing cards or discarding cards, you can take even more advantage of this. The second part, target opponent sacrifices a non-token artifact, is actually really good as well because, again, it does specify non-token and it is making that player sacrifice it. And again, in a multiplayer format like Commander, chances are pretty likely that at least one of your opponents is going to have a juicy thing for them to have to sacrifice. I mean, at the very least, yeah, mana rocks are definitely a thing that are here, there, and everywhere in Commander, so, uh, sorry, uh, you know, player that doesn't have access to green, um... Goodbye, Soul Ring. Now, that final one is definitely dependent on your opponents that you're playing against and what kinds of decks they have, but yeah, being able to deal damage to a target opponent equal to the number of cards in their hand, that can be... Well, actually, I mean, that could be the most impactful out of all these. Again, if, if a player's got a full grip of cards, seven cards in their hand, on attack, you are hitting them for seven. You know, on, on top of if you're also attacking them and getting through another five, so yeah, potentially 12 damage, you know, or again, yes, if someone's got no maximum hand size, they could have even more, so sure. But still, each of these are very brutal, and again, you get all of this from just one attack, or again, a death trigger for Baylor. And of course, there are plenty of ways for us to use and abuse each of those kinds of triggers. And the first way that came to my mind to use and abuse this card is, of course, getting additional combat steps. So something like... Well, in a very simple way, Relentless Assault. Now, Relentless Assault says a lot of words. Untap all creatures that attack this turn at this main phase, additional combat phase, full additional main phase. Basically, what this means is, hey, you get an extra combat. So have fun swinging again and getting that trigger again, which again has three very brutal effects for your opponents. So now with this lovely card, you get to swing again with all your creatures and get, what, six of those effects, essentially? And yes, that is assuming that you've got all three opponents still in play, but still, I mean... Definitely make sure you are considering decks that utilize combat steps, initial combats for this card. But of course, we can also take advantage of Baylor with cards like Mirage Falnix, Flame Shadow Conjuring, and Minion Reflector. Mirage Falnix has Soul Bond, so it can pair with another creature, and it says, as long as Mirage Falnix is paired with another creature, each of those creatures has, at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of this creature, except it has haste and loses Soul Bond. Exile it at end of combat. So basically, yeah, we pair this with Baylor and we're like, oh, cool, we get a second Baylor. Let's attack and get, you know, twice as many of those triggers and hit twice as hard. Now, unfortunately, that token does exile the end of the combat. It's not sacrifice, so we don't get that death trigger. But that being said, if we say have a sacrifice outlet or a way to sacrifice the Baylor token, we can get that trigger again. Speaking of which, Flame Shadow Conjuring is somewhat similar to this. It says, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay red. 
If you do put a token on the battlefield, let's say copy of that creature, that token gains haste, exile at the beginning of the next end step. So we cast Baylor and we're like, yeah, for just one more mana, I'll, I'll pay that so I can get a token copy of this that I'm also just going to attack with right away so that I can get that trigger. And again, like Mirage Falnix, unfortunately, this is going to have the token exile. But again, if we can sacrifice it, great, more triggers. Now, one that has an effect that is very similar to Flame Shadow Conjuring, but is better in this scenario, is Minion Reflector. It says, whenever a non-token creature comes into play under your control, you may pay two. If you do put a token into play, that's a copy of that creature. That token has haste, and at the end of turn, sacrifice this permanent. So this one, unlike the other two, lets us sacrifice that token copy. So we pay that extra two. We get a token copy. We attack, get that trigger, hurt our opponents quite a bit. And then you know what? At the end of the turn, we sacrifice it, and we get that trigger again to hurt our opponents even further. Yeah, this card can be very punishing when we're set up correctly with the right deck. And speaking of the right deck, well, some cards that work very well with this one are some commanders themselves with cards like Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker, Felden of Third Path, and Jaxus the Troublemaker. Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker is a very broken commander, but you don't have to build it in a combo way, and if you're not going in a combo direction, well, Baylor can be a fantastic addition to that deck. Kiki Jiki is a 2-2 Goblin Shaman with haste that has tap, create a token that's a copy target, not legendary creature you control, the token gains haste, sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step. So just by tapping Kiki Jiki, we can make a token copy of Baylor that again, we can attack with right away to get that trigger for the attack. And of course, on top of that, again, we get to sacrifice it. So we get that trigger again. This is just punishment on top of punishment on top of punishment for all of our opponents. And yeah, this can get really brutal. Next up, Felna Third Path can help us even when Baylor isn't even in play. Felden has paid two in a red, tap, create a token that's a copy of target creature card in your graveyard, except it's an artifact issue to other types, it gains haste, sacrifice, and we gain the next end step. So, Baylor in our graveyard equals punishment for our opponents again in those two ways, on attack, and again when we have to sacrifice that token. Yet for three mana, all those triggers, well, that's, uh, that's a lot. That is a ton. Moving on, how about Jaxus the Troublemaker, a 2-3 that has pay red, tap, discard a card, create token, that's a copy of another target creature you control, it gains haste, and when this creature dies, draw a card, sacrifice, begin the next end step, activate only as a sorcery. So with this one, we get even more value. We just have to pay a single red mana, tap, and discard a card, and then we get that token that gets to attack, and then we also get to sacrifice it, and of course, when it dies, we also draw a card. So our opponents are being punished, and we are being rewarded. Thank you very much, Baylor, and Jaxus, and Felden, and Kiki Jiki. Now, outside of those commanders that can make token copies that are going to be sacrificed of Baylor, well, another commander that really might want to utilize this new card is Ishin to Heavens is one. Ishin is a 3-4 human samurai that says if a creature attacking causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Yeah, Ishin loves attack triggers and has some very punishing ones, and yeah, obviously it really doubles up those punishing ones as well, including Baylor's, so your opponents are going to be in quite a bit of pain when you are doing this. And also keep in mind that you still get, you know, the death trigger if, you know, your Baylor happens to die as well. So yeah, your opponents are going to be wary when they have to actually take it out, but they're probably going to have to because again, all these triggers. Speaking of which, what was the original attack harmonicon commander, but has been kind of, you know, overshadowed now by Ishin, let's talk about Wolfgar of Icewind Dale. Wolfgar is a 4-4 human barbarian with melee that has if a creature you control attacking would cause a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So, basically the exact same thing, but this is only counting creatures that you have that are attacking. Regardless, it works the exact same with Baylor, double up those attack triggers. Next up, how about a demon tribal commander like Rakdos the Showstopper, a 6-6 flampling demon that says when it enters the battlefield, flip a coin for each creature that isn't a demon, devil, or imp, destroy each creature whose coin comes up tails. So this commander can already be very punishing, and again with a demon tribal build around it, you say, okay, my commander came into play, let's uh, get rid of probably about half of the non-demons. Oh, Baylor, you're a demon, right? You're sticking around, have fun. So yeah, a demon tribal deck can definitely utilize this brand new exciting card. Speaking of which, yet another Rakdos Demon Tribal Commander deck can definitely utilize this with Rakdos Lord of Riots. Rakdos is a 6-6 demon that says you can't cast Rakdos Lord of Riots unless an opponent lost life this turn. It has Flample and creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each one life your opponents have lost this turn. So first up, if you need to actually get Rakdos out, you can, you know, again, attack with Baylor. Cool, we can make an opponent, you know, take damage based on the number of cards in their hand. Great, so then we can actually get Rakdos out. And of course, when we are dishing out that damage as well, we also get to reduce the cost of creature spells we cast. And of course, again, you know, keep in mind that, you know, uh, Baylor has flying and is a 5-5. Five five. So let's say an opponent again has seven cards in their hand and we hit with Baylor as well. That's 12 damage in total. 
And that's just basically, you know, any kind of creature in our deck is essentially probably free to cast, uh, you know, except for their pips. Or, you know, if we have a bunch of Eldrazi, yeah, pretty much free to cast. Have fun. Moving on, how about a demon tribal deck built around Kali of the Vast? She has, whenever she attacks an opponent, you may put an angel, demon, or dragon creature card from your hand on the battlefield, tapped and attacking that opponent. So yeah, Kalia can definitely benefit from very similar things to, you know, this new demon. Obviously, Kalia can get your demon out for free, which is lovely. And of course, on top of that, you know, she also benefits from extra combat. So you can utilize those extra combat spells to benefit from her trigger and from Baylor's trigger as well. But yeah, overall, a very punishing card, one of which that has, you know, three modes, and none of them are very, you know, friendly towards your opponents. One of them can really mess with the opponent's plans, having them draw three cards and then lose three at random. They might just lose the three best cards that they had, or, you know, the three ones that they were set to play next turn. You can also make a player get rid of a non-token artifact, again, non-token, so they can't just, you know, sacrifice, you know, a Thopter or, you know, again, like a, a treasure token. They have to lose something of value like a soul ring. Not that those other things don't have value. You know what I mean, though. Way more permanent artifact. Or you can have Baylor dish out a ton of damage to an opponent based on the number of cards in their hand. So yeah, one player is bound to be drawing a ton of cards in a game of Commander. So have fun hitting them for, you know, seven, maybe even seven plus, you know, again, if they have, you know, no maximum hand size. Thanks a lot, Reliquary Tower. But yeah, overall, I think this is a very exciting card, and there's a lot of commanders out there that can really utilize this card. And yeah, make sure you're staying tuned to this channel for even more exciting cards and exciting spoilers coming up. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again, and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.